This is Hockey Talk. It's time for the Gambler's Match Game. And welcome back to Hockey Talk here on WNFL. It's time to play a little match game. we got Luke Bafia, defenseman, Matt Berkovitz, defenseman, in studio here, of course. Short and show, 6 to 6.30 here tonight. We're up against the Milwaukee Brewers. So we're going to keep it really quick and light with the guys. And then we're going to have Don Granado coming up for our last segment here. So first, gentlemen, Matt, Luke, how you guys doing? Doing good, doing good. Of course, they've all been here to the program before, so we'll get right into it. We're going to play a little match game, see if they match up on their answers. And really, it doesn't matter if they match up or not. It's all for fun anyway. I just want to see the response. I have to say, two of the three questions I'm going to ask you have nothing to do with hockey, and that's basically which way we've been going with this for, for the last month. So I'll get started with what karaoke, karaoke, like teriyaki sauce, <laughs> Let's try this again. What karaoke song could you nail in a competition? Well, uh, personally, me, uh, I'd have to throw it back with uh, Taylor Swift, our song. Uh, and that's Matt Berkovitz. Yeah. I, Sounds like the toughest defenseman on your team, Pat, right now, Taylor Swift. Well, I, I would actually expect a little bit of that from Berkey. And <laughs> Ryan, <laughs> Ryan Smith would be right next to him. I got a funny feeling. Yeah, I mean, it's just a soft song that, but it, it works the crowd, you know? No I haste. Like I hear you. Yeah. You're definitely going to pick up a lot of tips with that. Luke? Uh, the first song that comes to my head whenever I think uh, karaoke is uh, Sweet Home Alabama. There you go. Just, There's the hard nose. Yeah, like. Just the first one that comes to my head. I'm not a big karaoke guy. Don't think I've ever sang karaoke before, but uh, if I had to, it'd definitely be that. I was thinking about this, though, Pat, that we should do this with the guys once with their fans, is do a karaoke night in the in the lounge upstairs in the rush center. See how exciting that would be. Yeah, I don't know if we're ready for that level. <laughs> and, and I do hear these guys sing on a regular basis. I mean, uh, they, they get a little louder after every win, and uh, they all get involved. But Sweet Home Alabama, see, that's Luke being a great teammate because he's seeing right away that... If I bring up this song, everybody's going to be able to sing along. So he's trying to bring the whole team in. It'll cover up for him. That's just being a smart teammate right there. It's the softer side of Matt Berkovitz, though, with the Taylor Swift. Hey, heck of a job, first of all. Before I get to my second question, 36 wins this year. You guys are in the playoffs. You, know, you guys were here last year with 18 wins. This has got to be a really great feeling for you guys to turn it around in a year and be right on the top of the mountain with the Cedar Rapids Rough Riders going into the Clark Cup playoffs. Yeah, I mean, it's a good feeling, uh, especially coming from last year. It was a little disappointment, but being able to turn it around and have a great season and uh, be right up there at the end uh, with these last two games meaning something is really special. All right, back to some serious questions now. If you had to cook for someone, I want to start with Luke, what would be your go-to meal? Are you guys uh, chefs? Come on. Uh, I'm more of a breakfast guy, so if, if somebody wanted me to... Uh, to make them a meal would probably be uh, probably an oatmeal or not oatmeal, an omelet, <laughs> uh, an omelet and uh, <laughs> yeah, maybe an omelet with oatmeal. Right. There you go, Luke. You can't make me laugh. I'm battling a cold here. I'm I'm dying in this corner. Oh, it's got magic. <laughs> what goes in that omelet? Uh, usually just uh, bacon and uh, sausage. That's perfect. I'm an omelet guy. You know, that's that's perfect. Yeah, that's good. What do you think, Matt? Um, I'm a pretty simple guy in the kitchen, so uh, my mac and cheese is pretty good, though. I've made it a few times and uh, got great reviews, so I'm sticking, sticking to my guns. Is this a homemade mac and cheese or a craft macaroni and cheese in the box? Craft faces every time. You can't do uh, the normal ones. It's got to be faces. Well, my kids would love you, then. That's all they eat. <laughs> awesome. Third question here for you guys, and I want to know this from every perspective. Scott, Pat, Luke, and Matt, and somebody that's a fan of the game myself, I want to know what goes through your mind during the National Anthem right before a game, especially a big game. What's going through your mind? Well, uh, usually I just take that time to think. It helps you focus in, lock in, and uh, I like a good National Anthem. Um, I think it gets you a little jacked up before the game if the person's really belting it out, and it really gets you going a little bit. Oh, absolutely. That's got to be the, the most exciting time because you know it's right around the corner, right, Luke? Yeah, Matt Berkey uh, pretty much covered it there. It's it's just uh, some extra time to get locked in for the game and be ready for that first shift. 
No, absolutely. And I want to say, Luke, congratulations on your commitment. That's great to see. I know a lot of our fan base was waiting for you to make your decision. Western Michigan, it's going to be a heck of a program, and you're going to be a heck of a player there. We're, we're really happy to Thank see you. that. Thank you. No doubt. What about you guys? You know what? The, the anthem's kind of like that, that trigger for me. Like, you know it's game time. Yep. And I agree 100%. When you have a great anthem, it gives you a little extra pep and, and everything. But it is, it's kind of that, I have those little sequences of how you prepare for a game. And, and that's like that last thing. And it's like, okay, now it's really go time. And, and, and let's have some fun. And, and, you know, my last couple comments to the guys. And you bet you could see that's kind of a focus point for everybody and ready to go. Yeah, you see down our starting lineup and even on our bench when the national anthem's going, you can see the intent in their eyes of getting, they're ready to rock. You know, you, you see that even from the tunnel coming out. Scott, and you are a player. What what are your thoughts? I, I think different players go through different uh, different things throughout their career, but uh, I agree with, you know, I'll second what each one of these gentlemen have said, but it's just also a time where you just kind of sit back for me anyway and, and you're just relaxing. You've already done the preparation. You've already prepared You've already done what you need to do to get ready. And at that point, it's just minutes before, you know, that puck hits the ice. So it's just that five minutes of, yeah, a good anthem gets you fired up. But it's also that time to just kind of settle me, myself down to say, okay, it's game time. Let's get at her. No, oh, absolutely. Well, we're going to step out for a break here. I appreciate you guys coming in, Luke. and Luke Bafia and Matt Berkovitz, you guys are in Lincoln this weekend. Go get them. There's two more games to decide the Anderson Cup here. I know you guys are going to be great in Lincoln and then off to the Clark Cup playoffs. Good luck the rest of the way, and we appreciate your time. Thank you. Thanks for having us. All right, that's Matt Berkovitz and Luke Bafia. We're going to step out for our final break here, and then when we return, we're going to close the show with Wisconsin Associate Head Coach Don Granato. That's coming up here on Hockey Talk at WNFL. This is Hockey Talk on 1440 and 92.1 WNFL. Here's Jason, Scott, and Coach Pat. And hey, welcome back to our program here as we wrap it up. It's an honor to have our guest here for tonight. He helped the Green Bay Gamblers capture the Clark Cup championship uh, in 1997. Of course, he spent the first two seasons with the Green Bay Gamblers helping build that program before he was with the Wisconsin Capitals, also USHL team. Had a stint in the American Hockey League. Spent the last five years for the National Development Program. Unbelievable coach. Now a an associate head coach for the Wisconsin Badgers. Don Granato is our guest tonight. Don, first and foremost, congratulations and welcome home. Well, thank you very much. It's it's great to be home. It's great to be back in the state of Wisconsin, uh, and certainly uh, in a in a hockey capacity. Now, talk a little bit about your decision on joining the staff. You, Mark, and Tony, your brother. I mean, for everybody on the outside, you you look at that staff for the Wisconsin Badgers, and everybody feels like Barry Alvarez hit a home run with you guys all coming in. Yeah. I mean, Barry Alvarez deserves a lot of credit. Uh, I think he was under some scrutiny and, um, you know, took some, some blame for, you know, the product wasn't great the last few years. And I think the fans, uh, in, in my opinion, unfairly so, took, uh, Barry took some, some heat. Um, I think he's always cared about the program. I think he just allowed the coach and the coaching staff that was here uh, the respect of running it. Those were the guys that were hired. Those were the guys that, uh, quite frankly, did, did a fine job in winning the national championship in 2006, um, even though they struggled, you know, recently. But when Barry did step in and felt it necessary to make a change, um, you know, he went uh, he went out of his way, obviously, to pull Tony out of the NHL. Tony had been there for 28 years. Obviously, he's still there finishing up the season with the Red Wings now. Um, you know, myself and Mark were... We're not in the college game either. So he had to draw us all back in. And, you know, he went out. Um, he told everybody that the top four candidates for the job as the head coach uh, were Mark Siki, Mark Johnson, myself. And everybody told him that he'd never get Tony out of the, out of the NHL. Um, but he did. He got, he got <laughs> you know, he didn't get, only get Tony as the head coach. He got three guys that he, he thought were capable of head coaching in his mind. And it's awesome for us to, to all be here together. Well, Coach, now this is uh, Pat Mekis here. With everything changing so quickly for you, where do the where does the focus go? They're busy with their own teams. I know you've kind of already started out the process in Madison. You know, what is the changing process? Are you are you, is it a heavy recruiting load? Is it just trying to catch up with the players you have there? Where's everything at? Well, 
first of all, Mick, you're a great interviewer because that's a great question. <laughs> um, second, secondly, um, I rely on, on guys like yourself. Um, and you and I have already had conversations, but you know, you, the, you guys that are, are the coaches in the USHL, beyond coaching your teams and doing an incredible job, you know the player pool better than anybody in the country. I mean, you're the guys that stand behind that bench. Um, when you go out and you watch those players, you, you, you have a vision of how, how is this guy going to help me win? Not how talented he is, how is he going to help me win? That's the bottom line. So uh, lots of calls to guys like yourself uh, to get different opinions on players we may have coming in here, scheduled to come in here, and then uh, lots of calls to the NHL guys to find out what, you know, what the players are that we have here. Um, we've been able to work with the players, obviously, with inside the context of what the NCAA allows. So I've been in Madison. I was not in Green Bay last weekend with the, with the 17s. So I missed that trip, but I'm, I'm already in the trenches here. So it, it's all encompassing right now. We're, we're trying to sort through what we have coming in. Is it going to fit our plan um, and, and our objectives as a coaching staff? Uh, and then what we have here. And, and I will say, you know, uh, Mike Eves, um, although the team has struggled win in the win column the last two years, anybody that knows Mike Eves knows that there's plenty of structure that he left behind. Um, he's an outstanding coach. Uh, we are not inheriting a team uh, that's starting from scratch. Uh, there's, there's a discipline. There's a focus. There's a commitment to team, to the university, to teammates uh, that Mike proved through his coaching career to be exceptional at. So, you know, we're walking in with a pretty good foundation from that standpoint. Now it's going to take us some time to sort through what we want specifically from the player and, and, and depth within our lineup. What type of player do we want to bring in? What type of game do we want to play? Um, and match that up with maybe what's here or not here. Yeah, Don. Scott Jewett here. This kind of follows along with that foundation. But with your resume of, I mean... At every level of hockey, does your approach change when you come back into the college game now, coming from pro, coming from the development um, side of things? Does your approach change at all with this uh, age of kid? You know, it's, uh, I've talked with different NHL teams over the years, and, and uh, when we talked about maybe going to work for them or working for them, the question always seems, seems to be, is it development or is it winning? What's the focus when you're running an American League team? And You know, over the years in being involved in the game, what I've learned is, Development is winning. Um, you, you've got to work to develop your, your product, um, and, and that's a focus point here. One huge advantage for me was uh, last year you know, with the 18 team, um, we came in this building to play Wisconsin. We played Minnesota. We played Michigan. So for me, I did the pre-scouts um, uh, for those games, obviously laid out the game plan going into Yost Arena or going into the Kohl Center, or Mariucci Arena, I got a great feel for the college level and the college game. Um, so it's it's not like I'm walking in uh, cold turkey because we played these teams, um, you know, quite a bit at, at my, you know, with my my last five years at the at national team program. So um, it's a, I've got a really good feel for it. Um, uh, so I, I mean, there's a it's interesting. It's it's fun um, to have this as a challenge. Um, I do think, you know, having done pre-scout and watched Wisconsin, there's a lot of things that Tony and Mark will bring to the table um, that we can, you know, again, work off a foundation that Mike's left behind to enhance this product pretty quick. So that'll be exciting. We obviously want to get uh, marquee players in here. There's a player, Luke Cunnan, who Badger fans know, is a freshman. Um, he, he was on my team a year ago at the national team program. That roster at the national team program might end up having ten first round picks on it by the end of this draft, and so it was a pretty special team. Those are the types of players we want to get in here. We don't have enough of them here, or that's those are the players we're targeting and hope to get over the next couple of years. Don Pat here again, and uh, you know, being in Green Bay now for five years, I quickly realized you know that Wisconsin's a bigger hockey state than I ever knew growing up in Michigan, and and when I was away playing some hockey, but. Green Bay, we have the Gamblers, we have St. Norbert's, but I think the the state has kind of had that little bit of bond with Wisconsin hockey. And I, I, do you feel that pressure? Is that something that just builds excitement for you? You know, there, there there's pressure in all our jobs. I mean, you know that as well as anybody. And um, it's something when you're in the trenches, you don't you don't feel pressure. You're so pressed with the task of today. Um, you're so focused on okay. 
how is today leading to tomorrow and in six months from now? Those objectives are laid out. Uh, so you're in the battle, you're in the trenches. You don't, in essence, feel the pressure. If you stop and you think about it, yeah. But um, um, it's no different than any other job. It, it is. You're absolutely right. When I played here uh, back in the late 80s and early 90s, um, the games were televised through the state of Wisconsin. We actually had two two competing radio stations that covered the game. So when we go on the road, we would have two radio stations in their play-by-play and their color and traveling with us. That's how. And so in the summertime, if I'd go to a you know a place and go fishing up north, uh, I could walk in a place and people would recognize you. It was you know shocking to me uh, as a young athlete at that time, um, and you realized pretty quick. Uh, how big Badger hockey was. So it's pretty neat. Um, we know that we have to get it back to that level, to that standard. Um, we won't stop until we do. I can assure you that, that you know, that's a mission that we're, the three of us are on. That's something we accepted uh, in coming here, that we know there's a lot of work to be done. The funny thing is, and I've said this a lot, sorry to, to roll on here, but we – a lot of people, Pat, you know, talk to me about, hey, you're going to go in to coach the Badgers. And I would not entertain that thought for one second. You couldn't get me to start talking about it. I, I, my reply would be, hey, first of all, they got a great coach there. I'm not going to be thinking about doing that. But secondly, from the professional standpoint, our jobs are so intense as, as coaches that we can't afford to have our minds somewhere else. And if I'm coaching the national team, I can't afford to be thinking about uh, – you know, going into the Badgers. It's, it's daydreaming. It's fantasy world. So we never, I can tell you, we honestly never thought of this, Tony and I, uh, from the standpoint of we're going there. So we're really excited now because we wouldn't let our mind shift there, but what Barry called, talked Tony into doing it, um, and then made an offer to, to myself and Oz. Uh, it was at that point we got really excited. Um, but we are coming back here with a sense of obligation. We know that this team needs to turn around. And, and it's the obligation that's driving us every day. Don, one last question for you. You were pivotal in starting up the Green Bay Gamblers as, as the first head coach, and you are a fan favorite uh, here in Green Bay when you talk about coaches like Pat Mickish, John Cooper, Derek Lalone, Marco Siki, you name it, the coaches that come through here. But, uh, but uh, you know, looking at what you did for our program to start it up, winning the Clark Cup in the second year of it, uh, it just seems like every time you're in town, when you're on the opposing bench, you got a, sometimes a bigger uh, roar from our crowd uh, than other coaches. And I just want to ask you, is there a fond memory that you have of your time here in Green Bay uh, that you remember uh, as you move forward? Well, I mean, number one is just the relationships that were built there. I knew when I took the job we'd be successful because of the community. Um, I was playing as a player in the East Coast League. I, I loved it being a player. I never wanted to quit. But if you offered me a job in, in another USHL city, I, I would I would have went back and played. I believed after playing for the Badgers in the community of, of you know Wisconsin that it is, uh, and specifically the city of, of Green Bay, that area, I thought it would be a great place to sell parents on sending their kids to me. Uh, I figured we'd have great billet families and people that cared about them and fans that cared about them. I was right on all of that. So for me, I remember that panic going in and nervousness. And I I said, you know what? I I, I took this job because I knew it would be great. I knew we would be successful. We're going to get through this. We're going to, we're going to make this a a champion. And it was, uh, it was twofold. It was that and the players that we got. The players were were awesome to coach. Um, Great, great people. Um, we, we were character-based recruiting. Um, we figured we'd develop from there. That's why we, the first year we had nine wins and 34 losses, I believe. But we took all first-year kids. I said, much like the national team program, I said, you know what, we'll take our lumps the first year, but let's get character people in here and develop them. And we did, and then the next two years we won the regular season and at that point the national tournament. And it was, it was again, the community and, and the kids themselves. It was awesome to be a part of. And you mentioned all those coaches. My biggest goal, I think, was establishing a junior program that would stay stay there forever and have a top notch program. All the coaches that followed me made sure that they're awesome guys, and I couldn't be prouder to have uh, been associated with all of that. 
Well, Don, we're running up against it here. We appreciate your time. Best of luck this year as you guys rebuild the Wisconsin Badgers program. And once again, congratulations. You, Tony, and Mark, like, like we said before, that's a home run for, uh, for that program. And like we said, best of luck along the way. Thank you, and best of luck in the playoffs there, Mick. I'll be watching. All right, thank you very much.